Hi guys, I'm Danny, and I started a Sunday gym because I've noticed lately that people tend to go to colleges and universities without actually knowing why they're there. And afterwards, starting jobs are unfulfilling, so I'm interviewing different professionals to see what they have to say and share their knowledge and experience with you. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> right on, Emily. Thank you for joining me. How are you doing today? I am just fine. How are you doing? Rather well, thank you. Uh, the program will be focused on three main questions. What do you do for a living? How did you get there? And how did you know that this was the way to go? So tell us what you do for a living, please. Absolutely. So my name is Emily Caput, and I run Refresh Your Step. We are a boutique career advisory firm uh, based out of Atlanta, Georgia in the United States, but with clients all over the world. So what we do, my team and I, is we partner with clients on every level, every sector, from still in school to all the way up to the C-suite uh, on what it is that they're looking to do in their careers and helping them to actually navigate that. So we also craft high-level resumes and LinkedIn profiles. We help with job search strategy, interview prep, networking, negotiations. And I started the company 15 years ago. I've expanded the team, and that's what we do. So basically like an HR company that actually works. Yes, and and boutique career advisory is how I refer to it, but it's a lot of HR related type to, type of topics. Right on. So, were you like walking on the street one day about fifteen years ago, and you're like, "Let me make a boutique HR company," or was Not it more to quite, it? A little bit more to it. Uh, in I university, suspect. as 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 with most people, um, it while in university, I was studying broadcast journalism, so journalism, but to be on TV. I uh, actually was working in that up in Manhattan, New York City, uh, working for top markets right out of school. And I realized right then and there, wow, this is really toxic and I don't want to work in a toxic atmosphere. So in all of my brilliance, because I was like 22 at the time, I thought, well, let me go somewhere less toxic. And I ended up at an investment bank. You know, fairness, you look 22 now. So when you well, said 15 years ago, I almost didn't took you seriously. <laughs> You were very kind, and my young children, if they were here, would say, no, mom is old, but we'll take it when we can. Well, they should um, They're supposed to be like that. That is so true. Um, so I went to work at an investment bank, which for those of you who may not know, investment banking is highly stressful. Uh, and I did corporate communications as well as recruiting for an investment bank called Lehman Brothers. Uh, I was there in the good years. They did go bankrupt in 2008. I left in 2007. The reason that I left was because I saw again, everybody was miserable yeah. from C-suite, CEO, CFO. I mean, I, I, I spoke with them because I, in my role in the corporate communication side, miserable, ton of money, still hated what they were doing. And then when I was doing the college recruiting for them, these kids were going into these roles at the investment bank thinking they were going to be so happy because they were going to make a ton of money. They were going to fulfill their parents' dreams. They were miserable and everybody in between. I saw you're always everybody. going to be miserable if you're fulfilling someone else's dreams. A hundred percent. And so I recognize, hey, that's a problem. And I want to be part of the solution. Yep. So I actually left to go back and get my master's degree in educational psychology. And I was set to start the company in 2009. But the firm that I'd worked at filed for bankruptcy in 2008. And all my old colleagues who I'd already been mentoring and, and working with then were calling me and saying, oh my God, I'm screwed. What do I do? I launched the firm a year before I intended because that's what the market needed. My original intention was to do career advisory for young professionals and mid-levels as it didn't exist at that time. Most career advisory was based on if you were on a college campus and went to a career center or if you were an executive and had an executive coach. There was nobody helping out those in the middle and I saw an opening. Uh, and I also, because I had a journalism background, understood how to write. And so I was able to craft these resumes and LinkedIn. LinkedIn was still growing at that time. Obviously, it is what it is today. But I recognized an ability to craft the resumes and the LinkedIn profiles to ensure that they were high level and polished. So I got to be known for that and ended up as the, the youngest triple certified master resume writer globally. Um, I think I was 32 when that happened. So several years ago still, but, uh, but I've expanded the team since then, but yes, it, it was not a, oh my gosh, I'll start this company. It was a recognition of a need, uh, and a building on skill set and a lot of hard work to get to where I am today. Uh, it was impossible without the hard work. And that kind of leads me to the third question. 
How did you knew that this was the way to go? You kind of covered it already, but, you know, reason I'm asking is because, yes, okay, fine, your previous jobs were toxic and stressful. That's fine, but truth be told, uh, you know, and, and the reason I'm asking is because, as I already told you, you know, people tend to go to colleges, universities because of that stigma. You won't make it without a diploma. That, that's not true. We all know that. And not not only that, when you study something that is obviously not for you, you're going to start sort of job that's also not for you that's the majority of the cases and sure. there is no way and correct me when i'm wrong please but there is no way that you will do something eight to ten hours a day and that you don't like and it's not for you right. you, you can't be a happy person you're going to be miserable not only that if you let's say you have a girlfriend boyfriend a spouse or something they will be miserable too because you, you yeah. just you just carry this craziness yeah. inside you and it's it, it's a serious thing and people aren't really talking about it, which is that basically why I started. Now, about you, obviously a hard worker, obviously people's person, because you, you, I highly doubt you'd be able to do it without being a people's person. Right. Yeah, you have to. So you had the knowledge, the journalist background. You could have been a lot of things. Right. Pretty much, you could have even run for office. And trust me, I <laughs> never, I, 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 my career started in the government sector. Uh, I never encourage people to, to go there. But you can go there once you're above 70 years old, once it's done. We need them out at 70 years old here, but that's a whole different topic. Yeah, but, you know, after a certain, but not as a young person, you shouldn't be there. Oh, at least here in yeah. Southern Europe, that's my best advice, you know. Fair so, point. But, you know, all jokes aside, you could have been a lot of things, but you chose that. Now, you, you kind of highlighted about it that there is a specific business niche over there. You saw it. You decided to fill the gap. That's perfect. But sure. again, you could have been a lot of things. How did you decide to go with that? Was that a gut feeling? Were you influenced by someone? I, I would say it was a gut feeling in a lot of ways, but it was also it was also interspersed with these are my skill sets. These are my innate skills that are important to me to build on that will allow me to build a life that I want and be fulfilled doing work that's important to me. Um, and it, you know, quite a bit of it was also living in New York City at that time. I'm not in New York anymore. And there's a big reason for that. Living in New York at that time, I recognized that I wanted a different life than what I saw people in New York living, right? They might have had more money, um, but they also had more expenses and a lot more of a toxic workload and a toxic work life. They never saw their children. They never saw their spouses. And it just led to... I heard that as a rumor, but I really was never really able to believe that this is to be true. It's very true. It's incredibly true. And look, at the time I was in my early 20s and I was dating my now husband. And so we we would have conversations around what our values were what made sense for us. And it was, you know, we need to be in a place where we're working hard and we're doing work that matters to us, but in a, in a different part of the country where we could live the life that we wanted to be with our, to be with our family. So that was tied to our values, which tied to our job. Um, and so get, don't get me wrong. We both work very hard. Our children yeah. see us work very hard, but we're also able to provide a life for them that matters, you know, in terms of values uh, for, for raising them. Um, but I would say, and this is very true for the clients that we work with quite a bit. Look, a fair number of, the, of our clientele certainly do go to university, um, but there's a number that have been wildly successful without that degree, right? Yeah. And there's been a number of clients who have gone to university, have, have done well on paper, meaning they have their degrees, they're miserable doing whatever it is that they've been doing. And so when clients say to me, well, my resume says I didn't finish college. I didn't finish my master's. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. We're having conversations around, well, let's talk about what the work that you have done. We need to understand what your record of achievement is. How have you done great work throughout your career? Let's make sure to capture that. If you have a strong record of achievement, regardless of industry level sector, any of it, then you can make a name for yourself. You can continue to grow. If a company only will hire you based on where you went to college or if you went to college, that's a misalignment. You don't want to be in that kind of values. company. 
Yeah, it's a misalignment. And so if they will look past a record of achievement and not, not embrace you just because you don't have a degree and they're going to look past your, all of your success, you don't want to work for them. You yeah. will, they will lose out on you and you will be in a place that values you and you will be a happier, more fulfilled, more productive employee uh, and leader and person in life. And so I have that conversation with clients all the time. And it's very true. It is. And uh, it is also troubling that you, you said it brilliantly, you know, <clears throat> you shouldn't live for someone else's dreams because it, 100%. I, I've had so many people, you know, and even here on the platform, even people that just talk to me, they're miserable. That That's that's terrible. Uh, I, I'm grateful to my parents. You know, my, my my mother is a dentist and everybody from her family is a doctor. And my father was a mechanic and everybody from that family, like an engineer or something. And I never wanted any of it. I, mm -hmm. I always knew that I was going to deal with finance and accounting. That's what, what my high school profile was, bachelor, master, everything. I've been doing this for about 12 years now. I'm 32. Yeah. So yeah, that's, and I'm grateful that my parents never really pushed me to either side because they, they had the connections. I probably would have been successful either way. But I would have been miserable. I mean, I, I have seen firsthand how family pressure can really create challenges within like where people tend to take their careers or not take their careers or what have you. And so while I'm not a therapist and I don't play one on TV, you know, I I can say that it helps when people take a step back and yeah. really think through what they want and having a career support team actually really is helpful in conjunction sometimes with a therapist. That, that's a true thing, but having people who are on your side and can speak to you objectively, um, not knowing you since you were in diapers type of situation can speak to you objectively about who you are, what innately drives you, what your innate skill sets are, what your values are, and then help you to clear a path to move forward i mean it is immeasurable and how helpful that is to people mm -hmm. um, because what this world needs more of is people doing what they feel strongly attached to and innately driven by that's what will make this world a better place not doing what my parents want me to do or doing what will make me a ton of money and then being miserable on the side I agree 100%, but there's also, at least there was this element within me. Uh, I tried something different. I, I've always liked computers and, and stuff, you know, connected to it, but yeah. it wasn't really my thing. So uh, I got this course like CCNA for Cisco, mm -hmm. where, where, like architecture, root, routing and stuff like that. It was nice, but it wasn't for me. So, But, but I really liked it, like a hardware architect. It sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, and yeah. And I tried it for a few months and it was, it was terrible. I, I really hated it, but I didn't want to quit did because it, I would have lost it. the title. And well, yes, sometimes I, I think, it's, you know, it's easy to disappoint the parents and those around you. At least it was easy for me, but, you know, to admit it to myself that I wasn't good enough, that was, you know, letting, letting the ego go. And that was very difficult for me. I think uh, I, I'm not allowing that. I, I think the ego is pretty powerful on me. I think you did the right thing. And it, there's growth in that, right? Yeah. To be able to say, I tried this and it wasn't for me, but I'm going after the thing that is for me. It's a beautiful, beautiful process. It's an evolution. Yeah. And what it allows for is empathy when people around you are dealing with something similar. Because inevitably, your friends, your colleagues, people you know, we'll have a similar experience. And for you to sit down and say, hey, I went through something similar, but here's where I am today and I'm doing something that I really care about. Um, and let's talk about what that means for you. Yeah, It's just an opportunity as humans to grow. The, the, the financial analyst in me woke up because they were like, yeah. I can't do it. What will people tell about me in the financial analyst? Like, oh, come on, the course was free anyway. So you're not, you haven't lost anything. So I'm like, yeah, okay, fine, you're right. So I let it go, but that you really helped. And it 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 allows you to see this wasn't for me. 
Yeah. And innately, it sounds like you recognize on a, on a deeper intuitive level, this isn't for me. This isn't what I want to do. I clearly, it's not working out. Let me move towards what is. And letting go of that ego is harder than it sounds. But man, yeah. does it make the way for something else to come in that's way better. But once you let it go, you're like completely free. I, 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 I've, oh, been, yeah. I've been in heaven ever since. And you'll notice as you continue to get older, you care less and less what people think. That right there. Yeah. Green. So, yeah. Uh, you know, to people, I would say if you're if you're struggling with where you want to go in your career and do I go to university? Do I do this at university? Do I go on for my, you know, my higher level degree? It's different for each individual person. But ultimately, it's about identifying where you do want to go, where you want to go, not where your parents want you to go or where you feel like you should go, where you want to go, what your innate skill sets are. And having a support team around you to help you navigate that world, right? And and knowing that you're always going to be making the right decision when you're pursuing something that will professionally fulfill you. Um, knowing that it, it, it'll, it'll push you forward in this world. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And 100%. I have another question. It wasn't on the list, but I really want to ask because it's important. It's very important for me, but it's important for other people too. Sure. And I'm sure you, you, you get this question a lot. Yeah. Can you give us like a little bit of a tip? How do you balance work and family? Because it's crazy. Yeah, it's I know. It, I know it sounds like a cliche at this point, no. but it's not. In my mind, it's not a cliche. It's not. Um, so for me, it's two things. Things that I, I learned long time ago. The first is join the no club. The no club and say yes to joining it, which is counterintuitive, but basically it's say no to the things that are not serving you. And if someone comes to you and says, hey, can you do this in six months or three months or a month from now? Think about if I had to do this tomorrow, because time will fly and other things will take precedent. If I had to do this tomorrow, how would I feel about it? And if the answer is, no, I don't want to, say no now. That helps you get rid of most of the noise, right? The other thing I would say is you can do three things well. Okay, so think about what those priorities are. Now, for me, it, family and my my job, the company I run are my top two priorities. And those are right. I mean, they're the same. The third one is personally for me, um, my my physical health and well-being. So I like to when I'm not working or with my that makes kids, perfect sense. I like I mean, I like to work out. I like to take care of myself yeah. because it makes me a better parent and a better um you know, leader of my company. So those are my three priorities. Figure out what your three priorities are. Everything else can be let go. And that sometimes does mean you're not doing as many of the hobbies as you did when, when before you had kids, you're not, you know, going out to lunches and dinners and brunches all the time with your friends because you have different priorities now. So say no, join the no club and look at what your top three priorities are and truly focus on them. And mm -hmm. that for me has, has made all the difference. It's a good thing that you mentioned workout. I, I try to work out at least four or five times a week. Yeah. And you know, you know how they say that appearance doesn't matter. That's simply not true. Of course it does. It matters a lot. And it matters a lot. Yeah. It, it, it just does. Yeah. It's, it's how it is. And when you, when you see somebody well-trained in, in a shape, the first thing it comes to me, no matter, man, woman, doesn't matter. Okay, this person has discipline. You have to have discipline. Oh, oh absolutely. You, you know how you, when you walk into somebody's apartment and, and it's like squeaky clean and, and they yeah. give you a cup of tea and normally I'm standing back in the corner on, on one of my foot and, and zipping yeah. it and trying try not to spill a drop. <laughs> That's how I feel. When I walk into somebody's apartment and it's disgusting, it looks like a big hut, I'm definitely not going to keep well, it. If you don't respect no. your body and your place, why should I? But like if if your home and your physical self are not taken care of, then someone who's looking to potentially hire you are going to think this person doesn't care about their work. So That's don't care about me. Sense. And I'm not saying everybody needs to be like, you know, in peak condition. No, I'm saying no. people just to generally take care of themselves. 
um, sends a very different message. And it, it look, humans have biases. So we can yeah. either fight against the, the natural human tendencies to, to prefer people who take care of themselves, um, or we can recognize that's how the world works. And, and for ourselves, our mental well-being, our emotional well-being, our physical well-being, um, you don't have to go to the gym seven days a week and eat only kale. You can, you know, generally take care of yourself and notice the difference that it has on how you feel, how you go about life, how you are sh you're showing up for yourself, your friends, your family, and other professionals. It makes a huge difference in all of the right ways. Yeah, absolutely. So, I couldn't I mean, agree more. It just is it. Emily, many thanks for being with me. It was an absolute honor to talk to you. Please don't forget to send me all the links uh, and everything. I will there. send them so you have them in the show notes, but people can find me. My company is Refresh Your Step. They can find me at refreshyourstep.com. Uh, we are on, obviously on all the social media as well. Uh, and my email address will be in the show notes. I'll, I'll make sure to include it. So for sure, shoot me a message. My team and I would be happy to chat. Uh, and we look forward to future conversations. Not to mention, uh, when I am uh, when I upload the video, I'm going to take you everywhere. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, right I'll, I'll share as well. Thank right you. Right on. Emily, huge thanks for being with me. I have a remarkable day. Thank you. Bye. Guys, I hope this one was useful. Please follow the channel on YouTube, Rumble, Twitter, Gap, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Ring the bell and all the good stuff. Have a nice week ahead and I'll see you next Sunday.